this is this is pretty cool. This is like a straight up whereby. I think we're uh, we're hanging out, Jay. I think we're just uh, holding on. Hold, hold, the man. Hype. Technical the hype difficulties. Is building. Hang on, coming in. Yep. Okay. Houston, Houston, we have liftoff. We Hang on, live. all right, are, we are live. We are live. We turn are live. Camera, hey, turn to camera four, angle six. We are live. Oh, oh. Justin, how are you doing What's today? going on, Next Gen fam? Thank you, everybody, for being here. People are hopping in, coming in, tuning in. Thursday afternoon, what more could you want for a 1 p.m. lunch break while you're Impossible. afternoon coffee? Then hanging out with some of your favorite people and learning from Stacy Madison. I am oh so my excited. God. This is gonna be nuts. We got, there are probably so many people tuning in right now that are watching. I gotta give some special shout outs. Who's like who are the biggest shout outs? Okay, Paul McNeil, obvious shout out. You know he's, he's watching. Paul McNeil, I hope you're watching. Shout out Brian Wish, just an incredible Brian guy Wish. as well. Incredible work on vulnerability recently, writing some mm -hmm. great articles. Mark and the team at Babson and, and Skip oh. It App making a lot of this possible. The students at home who are dealing with finals via Zoom, oh, crazy, Aaron Lafazan, crazy. Aaron Lafazan, right now. shout out Aaron Lafazan. Shout out Jay Reen, okay? I don't know if Jay Reen's Jay Reen, all the way in the shout Philippines, Reen, definitely tuning in. Designer, just an absolutely incredible. Shout out Josh Arbit, really caring for our well-being at Fresh Prince, Such making sure we have the apparel we need. Shout out Fresh, shout out Fresh Prince. Shout out We're Fresh Prince. We're not live. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, uh, shout out, Stacy Madison, Rich Keller. Are you guys live in Facebook yet? All right, Houston, Houston, Houston. Houston. <laughs> we have liftoff. Do are we camera at camera one. six? <laughs> I love the camera idea. Three. Are, are we at camera six? Are we How's testing? Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. Hey, can you get the end? In? Let's, the end let's in? go. Let's go live to um to Brazil it. right now. All right, let's go live. Coming to you live from are we live? Brazil. Coming <laughs> yeah. to you live from New York. We are live, next gen oh. live. I'm pumped to be here. Dylan, what's going on, man? How are you? I could not want to be anywhere else on a Thursday afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern. Good morning, West Coast, if you're just getting up. We're here, we're having fun. It's a great day. Good time to be live. It's an unreal day. There are probably so many amazing next geners tuning in. Let's go to the shout outs. Who's on your mind? Next gen shout outs. Shout out Aaron Lafazan, Cornell undergrad, prop tech investor, looking to get his start. Huge shout out, Aaron Lafazan. I want to make a shout out to another collegiate entrepreneur, Mark from Babson, Ali from Babson, who are making mm. this all possible. Babson. Grinding at home, Zoom finals, building companies, you name oh it, God. they're doing it. Those Babson students are nuts. They're absolutely everywhere. Eight businesses per day. They're popping. We got to hire all of them. Per day. We need I've, all them to, to join. I've, I've tried. I've literally tried. There are too many businesses. It's it's too oh, fast. We, we just got Paul McNeil live. Paul McNeil's Paul live. McNeil. Paul McNeil. How are you doing? Shout What's out, up, Paul? That's called the Paul McNeil alert. Whenever Paul McNeil is on the live, we get the alert to the earphone. All of this. And this is the Rich Keller alert. Wow. He's it. Rich is Shout out Rich Keller, Shout incredible Rich. brand advisor, has helped us shape so much of our architecture. Shout out to Jenny and Richard from the SS&K team and, and yes. consultancy. Oh my God, these designers, Josh logo Arbit. creation. Talk about designers, Jay Reen, the whole team from the Philippines. Fresh Prince Made squad. The Look at that. Big fans. Jacob, Yola, fans. Lizzie, everybody. Shout out to Jimmy Lowry Jr., Next Gen HQ's director of media. It's mm -hmm. his birthday today. Okay, he's turning. How old is he turning? 16? I thought it was 17. Happy 17. 16 and a half okay, birthday. 20, he's turning 33. Guys, happy 33. 33. Jimmy, birthday, happy Jimmy 33rd birthday, Jimmy Hope you had an incredible, love you. incredible start to the day. Shout out to Stacey Madison, who's our guest for today. Wow. You need, you wait, to that Justin, is, that, is that the Stacey from Stacey's Pita Chips? <laughs> Have you ever had these? These are the best chips in the world. Yeah, they're possibly the best chips in the world. They're unbelievable. You, unbelievable. They're, they're incredibly addicting. I, Did I, you I listen to the How I Built This? I'm gonna eat the whole bag. Yes, oh, oh, so, good. Oh, so good, so good. I, I learned, heard Stacy's story on How I Built This. Oh, let's drop that in the comments. Let's make sure people get that yes, link. Definitely. Oh my God, that website, that interview is incredible. Stacy has one of the best stories of all time. Uh, so I'm pumped for Rachel and Stacy to have this great conversation, but how is this all made possible? Dylan, how are we here in the first place? I am so glad you asked, Justin, because I would be remiss to not mention our great friends at Dell powering this incredible webinar initiative to bring next-gen live programming to entrepreneurs at home. Shout out to the team at Dell, Mobilaji, Marcus, oh. Lucas, and everybody at Dell Technologies. 
if you are in need of anything technology, they got your back and you got crazy discounts. So Dell.com slash NG Summit. We'll drop that in the comments for you. Get like 45% off a new computer, a new monitor, whatever it is. They've got you. Wow. And what's even crazier, Jay, tell them about the one-on-one -on -one mentoring. How insane um, is that? This is absolutely nuts. So look, Dylan and I are, are trying to figure out this whole company thing. And we're like, we have no idea what right. to do in a lot of areas. So we we get to go and try to find one-on-one -on -one coaches to help us. Dell is offering, thanks to this partnership, one-on-one -on -one mentoring for all your technology needs. So sign up in the link. Again, throw in that. I don't know if it's down here. Is it here? Th Sign it up one-on-one <laughs> -on -one with Dell, learn about your technology needs, how they can be scalable. We're also giving away a ton of free stuff for everybody's work from home setup. Shout out Hannah who won our work from home giveaway on Monday. Oh yeah, Hannah Patience. We're, we're winning a ton of stuff, giving away a ton of stuff. So be engaged, give us your email, hang out with us. I don't know where it's being dropped, but make sure you get it and let's have some fun. Wherever it is, we're gonna have a great time, but enough of us, we could do this all day. We know you wanna to get to the good stuff. So without further ado, we're gonna turn it over to Stacy Madison. I'm gonna eat my peanut chips, have a blast here. And to introduce Stacy, let's bring on Next Gen HQ's Director of Community, Rachel Lee Gross. Rachel, where you at? She's coming. Boom. Hi, Boom. everyone. Happy we'll Thursday. Thanks guys Rachel. for that beautiful introduction. Have a great convo. Enjoy everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm glad it's I'm glad it's just it's just you and I here today. Thank you so much for joining us for the second installment of Igniting Inspiration Live. I mean, really, without further ado, we need to welcome the fantastic guests that we're welcoming on today. Uh, of course, you already you already all know this. I hope you have your snacks near you. <laughs> Stacy, why don't you go ahead and hop on with us so we can kick off this amazing conversation together? And Bada bing, bada boom. There you are, Stacy. <laughs> Ooh, um, can't hear. Now. There you are. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Guys, we oh have worked God. so hard to make sure that both of us are here right now with you in this moment. And Stacy, thank you so much for doing everything you can to get here with us. I'm sorry. You guys have worked hard. I have learned to unmute my microphone. And once I've gotten past that, I'm, I'm like, okay, that's it. We're good. <laughs> well, we are, we are so good. We're here. We're learning new skills every day. I know we're about to learn a ton and just be so inspired and motivated uh, with yourself here today, Stacey. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Where in, where in the global world are you joining us from today? Staying at home safe and cozy. Yes, this is my office the third floor of my house. Um, this is my cleaner office. I have, a, I have a tendency to have my office, like sometimes it's a kitchen counter and then I move to, you know, and I keep moving around. And if I want to find something, I have to go back to multiple piles throughout the house. And then I'm yelling at my kids that they should clean up. And then I realize, oh my God, it's my stuff that's everywhere. <laughs> It's okay. Well, thank you so much for making that office space for us to be here with you. Y'all, I'm going to do a really quick introduction of Stacey and just and just boggle your mind with everything she's done, and then we're going to dive right in. So with us today, we've got a couple couple different titles going on. We have the founder of Stacey's Pita Chip Company, the owner of Stacey's Juice Bar, the founder of Be Bold Bars, which I think Stacey is going to show us, show us a little bit of soon. And of course, just overall major disruptor of the food and beverage market. How exciting is this to be here with you? I see that we're that we're getting a sneak peek at the bars. <laughs> a sneak peek at the bars. I know. I I mean, without diving too much into my surprise here. <laughs> Give us a little but why not? Well, we may as well start with the end. <laughs> I know we can work back. We can work backwards. Yeah, this is our our uh, new product. It's a company I founded with uh, myself and my brother, and the bars are they're called. They're called Be Bold, no oh. shocker there, right? Be Bold Bars. And um, I need to open the box here and I'll show you. This is, is that upside down? Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> oh, it, it is right. You've got it right. Oh, I this is what the packaging looks like. And you can even see the bars. I mean, they're, they're really, they're amazing. And it's a product that started at the juice bar. So after I sold the pita chip company, I opened the juice bar. I'm sure we're gonna get into that whole story, but I want you to see how delicious they really are. I can just yeah. eat one while we're talking. But um, lucky me. <laughs> but if you go to if you go to we have our website, it's beboldbars.com and um, our Instagram is at beboldbars and we're doing a 
uh, free giveaway of bars right now. So if anybody's on Instagram, upside down. If anybody's, I gotta get better at that. If anybody's on Instagram now, you'll be able to, um, you know, get some bars and try them out and tag two friends and stuff. So yeah. Thank you so much for letting us know. Y'all, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and go over to Instagram to get involved while we dive into the whole story. Because there's a lot of things that happened for Stacey before Be Bold started. And Stacey, really today, I'd love to kind of start before Pita Chips were really even a part of your life. I think you have a really beautiful and relatable story of just kind of finding how passions shifted and trying to kind of find your identity within those shifting passions uh, and kind of how that looked for your early career path into the beginning of Stacey's. So we'd love to kind of hear a little bit of that story sure. and any kind of advice you have for those who are also facing that, that shift of direction. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I started when I first started, you know, I, I guess a lot of the, a lot of your community that's listening, um, you know, is probably younger than myself, other than my mother, because I think she's listening to this too. <laughs> but oh, um, easy, mom. she joined the next generous <laughs> and her husband, who's no, who just turned 90. Happy birthday, Abner. Oh. So anyway, when I first started, um, you know, I started as a clinical social worker. Um, my dad was a psychologist and um, my mom was teaching. And so, you know, I, for me, I think going into psychology and social work was easy. I didn't totally know what I wanted to do. And so I just did what was easy for me. Um, and so that's really the path I went down. I went down initially. Um, and what I realized is that, uh, you know, after I went through a lot of schooling and my master's degree and getting licensed, um, is that I really wasn't very happy seeing patients and, uh, you know, in private practice and, and do, it just really wasn't my thing. Um, in the meantime, I had worked my way through school, uh, both waitressing and cocktailing, and I love food. Um, I spent some time in California and in Hawaii and living out there and where the whole food scene is so much more, it's more advanced than the East Coast. It's kind of things start there, at least it was back then. Um, and, you know, so I got, I, that's how I kind of got introduced to the health food industry. And that's really what, you know, one of the things that kind of took me back to my roots is when I didn't have a job and I was in Hawaii is when I got my job there at a restaurant as an as a assistant manager. Amazing. So kind of being on that journey of always having kind of that love for food and that passion for that side of things, but also kind of figuring out along the way that some some of the education and places that you put yourself in just kind of weren't weren't quite fitting for you and kind of figuring out what that next step was. So yeah. And even my, my business partner also was um, he my well, he was my my friend, my brother's friend, my friend, my business partner, my lover, my husband, my <laughs> ex-husband and my business partner all around. Full circle. <laughs> and um, we you know, and, and he had gotten his doctorate in psychology. So, um, you know, they, these were really, really hard decisions when we decided to leave our careers and open up a cart a food cart on the street selling sandwiches. Um, you know, I'm lucky to have a mom that has unconditional love because I don't know if my kids did something like that, that I would be so, that's so loving. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you, do you kind of remember any of those points where you were really at that place of, I need to make a decision for myself? I ask because I think a lot of our next geners really kind of relate to that feeling of maybe something else was going on in their lives, but they're so passionate about building, about creating impact and change, and they're kind of at that precipice point. So is there something in particular that you remember going through that could be advice or useful for them? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I can share my story. Hopefully it'll be useful, but, um, you know, I think for me, it was a lot of when I removed myself from my, from, you know, just uh, living so far away from my family and being on my own, um, you know, making my own income, um, realizing how I'm going to make, how I'm going to make my money, you know, that that was a big deal. And, and that's kind of one of the pivotal times is, you know, also when we bought the food cart, you know, so, for, so I knew I, you know, I kind of said, well, I'm going to give my, give it a shot in food without having the money to do it. Um, it's a very hard decision to make. And when you do that, you, you have, 
um, this feeling of, okay, failure is not an option. <laughs> so when we went into this, we went into it, you know, full on that, okay, failure is not an option, but at the same time, if we do fail, we have something to fall back on. So, you know, it may set us back a few years or it might, but you know, if you, you know, if you don't try, if you don't give it a try, then, you know, all you have to lose, you know, you're going to for forever be asking yourself, you know, that that's the only regret you will have is the regret that you didn't at least give it a try. Exactly. That's, that's so much of kind of the battle and the journey, at least making that point where you're, where you've jumped off that cliff and said, you know what, I don't know what the future is going to look like, but I'm going to do it. And I'm all in on that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a great, that's a great analogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you. I love that with skiing too, because sometimes you can stand on the edge of that slope for so long and your stomach starts gurgling. You know, am I going to do this? Am I not going to do this? Am I going to go around? <laughs> Or am I going to go down? And sometimes you go down and you just completely wipe out. And other times you go down and you're like, hey, yeah, I did that. <laughs> exactly. And I think it's it's so important to know that it's okay. If there is a major wipeout, that means it wasn't it wasn't meant to be in that way. And there's something there's something else, another slope to kind of go down and jump yeah, off. And, of. you, and you may not look that graceful. It's okay. <laughs> you may not look that good doing it. <laughs> but you know, you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what did that actually look like for you to take that jump and just do it? Uh, you've mentioned food cart a few times, and I know that that's connected to Stacey's Pita Chips development. So kind of what yeah. was what were those phases of your story like? Yeah. So I, I think, uh, you know, a, a lot of times people are like, well, how did you get there? How did you get there? And, you know, I sometimes I ask myself the same thing. Um, but uh, I think my big, my biggest motivator was, you know, I was, I was managing um, at this restaurant out in Hawaii. And, you know, part of that was, you know, they were opening up this new surf theme place. And I got to be a part of this team that was opening up this restaurant. And it was fun. And we had surfers and surfbirds and stuff all over the place. And I kept being promised this bonus if we get this open and off the ground. And ultimately, um, uh, it was very successful. We were stuffing fistful of cash in the beer boxes and bringing it to the basement. And I, it was crazy. Um, afterward, I kept, uh, you know, having meetings with the manager. So, you know, how do you think it went? Any feedback from the owners and da, da, da. And, uh, and long story short, they ended up letting me go. And the fact that I, and it, me and four other managers, um, and I was just so shocked. I had never lost a job before in my life. I had put my heart and soul into this. And um, and I know I did a great job. I saw the success, right? At the time, I was devastated. I was, um, I had worked so hard for somebody else. And it was kind of, it took me, you know, after I got out of her bawling my eyes out and, and all of that, um, it, I realized that, you know, if I could work that hard for somebody else, then I could do the same thing for myself. And so that was a huge motivator. On top of that, look at how much I learned from that experience. I learned how to be a good boss. Like, don't screw people over like that, you know? So I learned, I learned how to, I learned how to be a good boss. I learned um, how to open a startup. You know, I learned the amount of energy and all of that it takes. So looking back, it was probably, you know, I could look back at that and say, well, you know, getting fired, probably the best experience in my life, or, you know, a, a pivotal point. So, um, so that, so taking that, is where I can't hear you. I don't know if I'm supposed to hear you. No, you're good. Oh, okay. All right, good. <laughs> um, so taking that, so, so you know, uh, we used that. So I basically took what money I had myself and Mark and we, and we worked together and we bought this food cart. We came back to the East Coast and we started a food cart in downtown Boston. We wanted to do something in the restaurant business. We did not have the money to do it. And so we took the um, we took a food cart, we revamped it, and we started selling sandwiches rolled in pita bread. 
And uh, at the end of the day, we would take the bread. You can run out of tomatoes, sprouts, anything you want, but you can't run out of bread. So we always overordered. We always had this bread. We'd cut it up. We'd bake it into different flavor pita chips, and we'd hand it away for free to people standing in line. Amazing. Stacy's so Pita <laughs> Chip Company was born. The ones you still have on your desk and you're eating today. And that was in 1997. <laughs> Wow, amazing. First off, I love Boston. I'm definitely a Boston girl, heart and soul. So I was so excited to hear that your story, that your story kind of started started there. And also, I mean, what a way to call yourself a sustainable entrepreneur. You're actually just making sure that you're utilizing everything that you had when you first started out with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you really and you know, it's funny because um, what, it, this was before the whole natural food business evolved. Mm -hmm. And really, we used the pita bread, a little bit of oil and, um, and, uh, you know, natural milled cane juice and, you know, th like healthy things. And people were like, Oh, natural food, oh, natural food. And we were like, natural food. We're like, well, we this has always been our ingredients this is always so so for us, it was just such a that was a, mm -hmm. an easy transition. And when we first started, you know, after the food cart, we first started to selling to gourmet food stores, um, it was a very easy transition for us to go from, you know, 200 natural gourmet food stores to 2000 natural food stores because um, we it's just what we always had and eventually rolled out, you know, obviously across to bigger. <laughs> exactly. So kind of pulling in on that, a lot of the next geners in our community are more so early stage entrepreneurs. They're really in that space of moving from ideation to really building and developing a pre-seed stage within kind of that area. So I'd love to kind of hear a little bit more about what those early stages really looked like looked like for you. What was that on a day to day? What were those kind of big moments that happened? Um, anything that you can kind of recall from that development phase? Yeah, so well, you're really testing my memory now because '97 <laughs> was a long time ago. But you know, it's a very memorable time, and um, yeah, I think going from the food cart um, to the pita chip company and growing that, you know, probably one of um, our most key decisions was switching and you know so so we had to we came to like an inflection point where we had to make the decision on on are we going to get more food carts are we going to try to franchise are we going to try to get an indoor location and we did try to get an indoor location in downtown boston it is not easy you can stand <laughs> online for every tiny little spot that dunkin donuts and starbucks and Oban pan and everybody wants in to get into and you and your food cart can go deal with the, you know, real estate people to try to go get a place. And we really, um, and then I, and then I tried to start Stacy's at Macy's and um, <laughs> that was dealing with Macy's in New York city. And that was a little hard to do. And so um, really you got to be prepared to have a lot of doors shut in your face um, and to keep going and, and figuring that out. And so um, we had to make a decision on, well, do we try to get this indoor location? And we kept looking. But in the meantime, while we were looking, we were like, well, why don't we try to sell the pita chips? Mm -hmm. And eventually we had to make a decision between the cart and the and the restaurant and the pita chip company. And we were just doing too many things. And we decided that we could get bigger faster if we went the route of the pita chip company. And, and a key mm -hmm. lesson learned in that is, you know, you can start off by we're going to go into the food business and, and, and you know, um, and I see this from so many MBA students and this and that, and they have their whole plan and their exit strategy and all of this stuff. But you have to you have to keep a, an open mind and be able to see opportunity and make a change um, or who knows, I, I could still be on a food cart in downtown Boston right now. Happy, but yeah. It, you know, very different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love that focus that you have, especially on just keeping going, even through rejection, even knowing that sometimes it's hard to get one, two, three plus doors kind of shut on you to to be able to keep going. Uh, on that note, I'm kind of you have to you have to, you have to be bold. You have to be bold. So what a good good runoff question on that. What does it actually mean in those cases <laughs> to be bold? 
I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> That's okay. So what does it what does it mean kind of in those early stages to be bold, to kind of keep going? Was there any sort of kind of mindfulness that you found yourself really holding on to during those stages? Did you think it was helpful to have that business partner present there to to be able to keep going with? Yeah, I mean, it was it was I mean, it was super helpful because um Mark and I were equally committed. There's no doubt you know we, we argued over a lot of things but there is definitely no doubt that um you know our commitment level was equally shared you know um like we we both went on the failures not an option kind of you know train and and mm -hmm. it was really our that was our child you know we were growing this together and um you know so the the commitment level was there for both of us and um in the beginning it's kind of like everybody does everything but as you start to grow the business then you also realize that um i, I mean it's a, it's a hard lesson to learn but like but mm -hmm. that you have to figure out what each of you is good at and what what you want to do and then you kind of go from there so mark really wanted to work on new product development and and more of the product side and i was more interested in some um of the marketing side and some more of the business end of things um and and the growth so you know a lot of it we shared together but a lot of it as the business growed we grew, growed as the business grew <laughs> we had to we had to uh figure out like you know what was each of our areas of specialty and you know it's the same thing as you start to build out a team exactly exactly i love that so being able to know that whoever was involved in this process of growing was really committed that seemed to be kind of the that number one thing that that really got you through all of those moments of continuing to just push forward yeah, and I think that's really important with having a partner, a business partner, and um, you know, and and even if you don't have a business partner, if you're starting a company on your own, it's really, really important to have that networking or that sounding board, um, whether it's an advisory board or whether it's just a networking group or whether it's other men or women or um, fellow students or what have you, to just have have that to process on because otherwise you know you're it's because that's going to kind of help accelerate your growth mm, yeah exactly maybe for some people that's having next gen hq and being a that's part of right community. i'll throw that in there <laughs> <laughs> that's right but this i mean this is amazing i mean what i wouldn't have done to have something like this when we first started i mean it would have been hugely helpful and and how I built this was very nice and all this, like all this that really does, it really is a support system out there just in a different sort of way. Like we had to get out and we had to go places that, I mean, you guys, and especially right now where everybody's stuck at home. I mean, there's such an opportunity for growth and learning right now. Mm. Some, yeah, I keep, I keep definitely thinking on that as well, seeing this time as an opportunity to not only become more embedded in the community and the support network that I have around me, but also learning more, getting on webinars like this and being able to hear amazing inspirational stories like yours certainly, certainly helps that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, if help, if, if just telling the story helps, you know, even one person along the way, then, then it's worth it, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So pop, popping back into that story a little bit, we're and at Next Gen HQ. We are all about momentum and all about making sure that entrepreneurs really feel energized along their journey to kind of continue, as you said before, to keep going and to keep pushing through. I'm curious what the moment was when you realized the success of what you had done. So rather than just making pita chips, just having them be the excess of something else that you were doing, what was that moment where you were like, wow, this is this is taking off. This is something that we need to really put all of our heart and soul into it's so funny because at one point we thought i'm like you know we thought oh my god if we could just be in whole foods like that would be the be all end all you know like that's when you know you've made it is if you're in this one account 
and then you say something and then then it's some other account that's when you know you've made it if you're in this other account or that's when you know you've made it if da, da, da. and it's kind of like you're still struggling along you're still struggling what you thought might have been the be all end all is is not um but there were times you know or, or some people say oh when you saw it on the shelf was that the first time where you felt success or you know so all these little things but they do all eventually add up um but it's it's these like bizarre weird bizarre moments that sometimes are the ones that stick with you the most <laughs> um we were you know every year we would do the breast cancer walk um mm -hmm with our family and sometimes with work and just get a whole bunch of people together and do the breast cancer walk um, down along the Charles. And we had, uh, there's 30,000 people there and we were walking along and we saw blowing by us a bag of pita chips, like an empty bag of chips on the ground. And we, you know, and we all kind of stood there <laughs> and we looked at it and we were like, Oh my God, there's a pita chip. And, 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 it flew by and we were kind of, and then we stood, stood around it and we looked down at it and we were like, hmm, do we pick it up? And I'm like, oh, I know, maybe we should leave it there because there's 30 people, 30,000 people coming by and, you know, look at how many people will, the exposure. And then, you know, we kind of had this little debate as to whether we should pick it up or just leave it, but it is litter. But, you know, so, uh, so we weren't sure of the message and, you know, like little times, times like that where you were like, you're like, yeah. That, like that, you know, it wasn't a Frito bag and it wasn't a, you know, it was it wasn't a granola bar bag. I don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was our chips. We were, we were mighty proud of that litter. So we did end up picking it up and uh, we brought it back and we framed it. I still have it somewhere. We did frame it and we hung it in the factory because <laughs> yeah, that was, you know, that's, that was really meaningful. <laughs> I love that. So it's, it's kind of the, the little moments that really, yeah. that really stuck out to you and had you really realize the extent of what you were starting to build or had. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing.